Alrighty, here I am in one of my math lessons and I'm going to make a recording of me teaching students about this concept. So if they miss the lesson or they need time to rewatch the video and relearn it, they can do that in their own time. Here I am going through the content. They can see everything that I've written. I can use my cursor to gesture to certain parts of the question. And more importantly, they can see my face. So it really feels like I'm there teaching them in the moment. If you want to learn how to make this kind of video, this video on YouTube is for you. I'm gonna take you through how to download, install, and then set up OBS Studio in a very simple and straightforward way so that you can straight away today start recording videos like this yourself for your students so that they can learn even when you're not there in the room with them. Let's dive on in and get you started. So the first thing we need to do is download it. And to do that, you head to the website obsproject.com, which is on the screen and in the description, or you can just search for OBS and it's gonna be the first result most likely. And then you click into this website and you have download options for your platform of choice. So click that Windows button there. And then you can either save this file or you can open the file. It's just a download file, so I'm just gonna click open. Now, I'm in Australia and in a particularly slow internet bit of Australia, so the download is going to take a bit. So while it is downloading, I'm just going to talk to you about why you would use OBS instead of some other software. Uh, I personally love it the most because it's free. It's super powerful once you get the hang of it, but it is very simple to use if you uh, can wade through all the complexity of it all. And I'm gonna help you do that today and show you the absolute simplest way to use OBS to make videos. Okay, so the download is finalizing. I'm gonna get a pop-up window very shortly asking me if I'm happy to install this guy. And I am, so I'll just wait for that. Here it is here, OBS Studio Installer. I'm gonna click yes. Now, if you saved your file rather than opening it, you're gonna to have to navigate to where you saved it and double click that file to open it. So here we are in the installation settings. I'm just gonna click next, next, and then this is where it's gonna install on my computer. If you wanna install it somewhere specific, make sure you click browse and choose that. But otherwise, uh, clicking install will be fine and it's gonna run through this installer here. And once that's done, you'll get the completed setup screen. It really is that simple. Uh, we just wanna launch OBS Studio, so we'll click finish and it will launch on our computer here. Now, we'll just automatically launch, but for the next time you wanna open it, there's of course many ways to do it. I just like hitting the Windows key on my computer and then just typing OBS and it'll come up like this, OBS Studio, and you can just click it and it will open on your computer. And here we are. Now, first things first, I want you to pump the brakes. Yes, if you've never used a program like this, it looks extremely overwhelming and extremely complicated, but I'm gonna take you through the absolute basics and explain what's happening here so you're not too overwhelmed because it's a really powerful tool and it's gonna make your videos awesome. So the first thing here is that we've got our settings. I recommend going to settings first and setting those up. So the main settings, yes, there are so many customizable options. We're gonna go through the absolute fundamental ones. I recommend first things first, you go to output and then you're gonna choose your recording path because when you've uploaded your recording or rather when you've finished your recording, it's gonna save it somewhere and you need to know where to find it. So click browse and then click it put it wherever you want. For example, on my desktop, I have a video folder and I've got a clips to edit or store folder. I'm gonna just select that one and then click apply. And that's where they're gonna be saved so I know where to find them. If you'd like, you can use the settings that I've got here. They're not super important. The main thing is that you know where that's gonna be going. Feel free to use these, uh, these settings if you'd like. In the audio section, you can change all these sorts of things, but it's really not that important. The main thing is that your microphone, if you're gonna be using a microphone, that that's set up. I have many options here because I've got my headphones over here, which have a microphone attached to them. I've got the onboard computer microphone. I've got um, the webcam that I've got plugged in microphone, but the one I want is the Yeti stereo microphone. That's this guy here. So I'm gonna select that. In video, you choose your uh, base resolution, your output resolution. I recommend that you keep them the same and then also choose the ones that are the same size as your computer. If you're not sure, a good fundamental one to go with is 1920 by 1080p. 1080p is HD and it's gonna be a really good quality and a really good size for you. And they're the main three that I'm gonna be looking at here. Um, as you can see, there are so many different ones and feel free to familiarize yourself, but if you want the absolute fundamentals to get us going, we need to know where to save our files. We need to know what microphone or audio input we're gonna be using. And we also need to know what video settings we're using. And those are the three we've done.
So once we're done with that, we can click OK and get out of settings. Now that we've selected our microphone, we should see here um, the levels of our microphone. So at the moment, you can see my microphone is peaking up to between minus 15 and minus 10. Um, that's roughly where you want it. It's in the orange range, which means it's loud, but it's not too loud. If I yelled, I'm not going to for the sake of your ears, but if I did yell, uh, it would head up into this red area here, which means it's peaking. So just make sure your levels are roughly there. Uh, to change that, you can just change uh, these guys here, this volume here. Now it's very quiet. Um, it won't change on this recording because I'm using a different program to record this one. But uh, if you want it to be way quieter, you can. If you want it to be super loud, you can as well. And you'll see it, it says 0.0, .0 dB here. That just means that's the decibels. That's what that stands for. Uh, I'm going to leave it at zero because it's right where I want it. Okay, now we've set up where our files are going to be recorded to, what audio input we're going to be using and also the video formatting settings we're going to be using. We're ready to actually look at this and how do we make the actual video. So for now, for your purposes, all you really need is one scene and we're just going to call it scene. You can call it whatever you want by right clicking and clicking rename, but I'm just going to leave it as scene and I'm going to have more focus on this sources menu here. And this is where we're going to tell OBS what I actually want to record. So the first thing I want to record is my other laptop screen. Now, if you're only on one device, it's going to record itself, and I'll show you that short uh, right now. By clicking this plus button here, I'm going to tell it to record my entire display. Okay, I'm going to call it uh, screen. You can call it whatever you want, and click OK. Now, this is the one that's automatically come up is my other screen here, but I'm just going to show you what happens if I try and record my primary monitor, which is the one where the OBS uh, window is open. So you can see here that OBS is referencing itself, which is therefore referencing itself and it's on and on and on into this inf infinite spiral and it's kind of trippy. So if that's the case, don't panic because when you leave OBS, so say I come to my monitor, it's still recording this even though you can't see it happening. It's minimized to my tray, but it's still recording this. So you don't need to worry about that. As long as you're recording the screen where you're going to be showing the content to your students, that's fine. Now, just so we don't have to keep looking at this, I'm going to click this settings or this source properties, and I'm going to change that to my laptop screen and click OK. So this now is on my laptop screen, which is to my left, uh, and I'm looking at this on my monitor and you're watching this on my monitor. So now, if I clicked record now, what it would record is this screen going up and down like this and I can talk about it. And as you can see in the bottom middle, it's recording my voice. So at the very least, if this is all you want, this is all you have to do to be able to record your screen and your voice for your students. In the properties for this one, just keep in mind to tick this if it isn't already, capture cursor. That means when you're showing this video and you're recording the video and your uh, cursor is over and you're showing student stuff with your cursor, they can actually see it. I've made the mistake of doing a full tutorial before and my cursor wasn't seen. So everything I was talking about, the students had no idea. Big mistake, don't make my mistake. Make sure you put that capture cursor on. Okay, so like I said, if you're happy with this, you can go with this and straight away record your screen and record your audio and you're good to go and it will save in that file destination that you put earlier in the video. All, to, all you have to do to start recording is click start recording. Down the bottom, you can see a little uh, red circle there that indicates that you are recording. Also on the icon in the tray, the OBS logo has a little red circle in front of it, which tells you you're recording as well. To finish the recording, all you have to do is click stop recording and you're done. Now, keep in mind, if you were on the source where uh, you were watching yourself like this, uh, because you only have one monitor, say you're doing it all within one laptop and you don't have an external screen, you just need to click start recording like you would before. And then when you minimize this and you say, go to your lesson like this, you guys are just looking at me looking at this lesson. It's actually being recorded in the background. And again, that red circle in front of the OBS logo tells me it's being recorded. Then once I've finished the lesson and I'm happy with what I've talked about in the lesson, I can just go back to OBS, click stop recording, and that video will be done. Okay, so I've put the lesson back on my laptop screen because I want to show you one more thing you can do with OBS. Actually, there's a couple more things, but this is one of them, is you can include a video capture device or your webcam. So if you have a built-in webcam in your laptop or you have a standalone webcam like I do, we can add that as a source 
in this sources section, just like we added our screen recording, click OK. And it's gonna to default to this one. If you have multiple, you can click the drop down and select the one you want, but you've probably only got one. And I'm going to, instead of having the resolution as the built-in one, I'm going to change it to a custom one. Click the drop down for resolution and click 1920 by 1080, which is gonna default it to being full screen, but we can resize it with these red, uh, red resizing tools here. So if I make that much smaller, I can resize myself, say, into the top left-hand corner or the bottom right-hand corner, wherever you want your face to be. So now as I go through the lesson, my face is overlaid onto the recording. And so as I gesture to things like, okay, guys, now make sure you have a go. A particle moves from point A to two to point B, negative one, three, express the displacement vector of the particle in component form and make sure I'm talking to the camera like this, not this camera, which is you guys watching, this camera up here, which is the students watching. Uh, so I can talk like this and be gesturing to the different parts of the question. And it's much more engaging for the students to, to be doing so. So that's an option as well, having your webcam there. If you don't like the size of the webcam in terms of what's in the screen, if you hold Alt on a uh, Windows computer, I think it might also be Alt or Option on a Mac, you can click and drag and actually just like crop it. So if I don't want that all that width and I really just want the frame in which I'm in, so it's more of like a talking head, so I don't want all that extra stuff there, I can just go like this and then I can put myself in the corner and then talk to the students that way and then they don't have all that extra stuff in my room. Uh, say you're in your staff room and you're recording a video maybe or you're wherever and you just don't want all that background noise, uh, you can do it that way as well. So there you go, my face is in the video like that. With, I'm just gonna get rid of that from, oops, wrong one. Clicking these little eye icons is going to uh, get rid of the source uh, so it won't be in the recording if you're currently recording. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you is all of this extra stuff around your screen like this Bing sidebar, all of my icons at the bottom, all of this at the top with the, um, the file path and all that sort of thing. If you don't want that in your video because you think it's gonna distract students or it's sensitive information or something like that, similar to with our webcam, if you hold Alt or whatever the command is on Mac and you drag these red uh, bars here, you can start to crop what is shown in your video. Now, unfortunately, that means that I'm going to be losing a lot of the uh, space at the top and bottom, but if you're happy with that and you're just gonna have black bars, that's how you do that. You can also crop from the side to get rid of that bar and it's all, it's gonna do a sort of zoom here for me. So I can zoom out in the application, which is on edge and zoom in like this, which is going to bring those, get rid of those black bars at the top and bottom and just zoom right into what I'm actually recording here. And that might be a better option for you as well. So just play around with that and you can decide that. If you wanna uh, take it back to how it was by default, come over to OBS, right click on the, right -click on the screen, sorry, and go to uh, the transform uh, menu here and just go fit to screen. Oops, excuse me, to go to the transform, we have to click reset transformation and then that's like that. Now, if you've got a, it's for some reason way smaller and you wanna zoom it up so it fits the screen, that's where you can right click, go transform and go fit to screen and it will zoom right in for you. If it doesn't quite fit, like say for example, there's, uh, say it is cropped and it's like black bars like this, um, sort of like this on your screen and you wanna kinda of like stretch it to fill out the entire screen, you can right click, go transform and go stretch to screen and it'll stretch it out. It may change the aspect ratio and make it look kind of weird, but uh, at the very least it fills the screen if that's what you're interested in. So I'm going to go right click transform, reset transformation and take it back to how it was at the beginning. Okay, so there you go. In this video, we downloaded, installed, and learned the absolute fundamentals of how to use OBS to create videos for our students. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you give it a like and make sure you subscribe if you're interested in more content like technology and AI news and that sort of thing in education. Uh, if you're interested in a bigger deep dive into OBS and the more, um, I guess, advanced features of it to really make your videos amazing, uh, there'll be a link on the screen for when I've finished that video. I'm gonna make a really in-depth tutorial. Uh, hopefully this Absolute Fundamentals one helped you get off the ground running and you can create some videos for your students on your laptop or on your desktop PC. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in that other video. Thank you.